Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and guys the last couple of days here have been very prosperous <laughs> and very amazing for everybody who's taken the same trades as i am as you guys know i mainly trade xrp bitcoin and ether over on bybit and the last couple of days have just been very 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 freaking good now I'm going to tell you guys a little secret, right? And that is that I give all these freaking hints about the price if you watch my channel often enough. And even though we're not going to always be correct. Over the last couple of years, the trading has done me very, very well. And so just watch and enjoy. And again, just look at the results. If you don't like it, you don't do anything. If it is something you like, you might want to take up some hints. Not financial advice. Whatever I'm doing might work for you, but it also might not. All right, I try to tell everything up front and I try my best as best to make everything as clear and logical as possible. But in some weird shape or form, for example, signal providers that some are out there, I don't trust them, I don't like them because there's always this discrepancy of you need to know exactly what the person is doing to mimic the same results. For example, if I put up 100 trades, it could be that I win a lot of money and you actually lose. How? Because if you, for example, don't apply the exact same strategy with buying X amount of lots or X amount of lots at this or that point, while I am, for example, DCAing and you're not, you know, that can basically deviate how much money you make at the end. And so I just wanted to quickly make that summary. But our last trade here, we talked about over in, I believe the last video here, right? A couple of hours ago. And funny enough, I told you as well throughout that video that if I were you, I would take profit a little bit before this major resistance line. And look at this, guys. I haven't changed anything, all right? This was hours ago that I made that video. I just published it a couple of hours later, though. But I believe we were like, I don't know, maybe like $1.05 or so when I, when I posted that video or when I at least recorded it. You can check back and see exactly where we're at. Uh, and you can see, look at that. <laughs> That is so funny because I was telling you guys about taking a profit just a little bit below it and look how close that was. huh? It's kind of coincidental because basically this trade we took in theory but also in practice on my own account. Um, how you do it is basically you wait for confirmation of a pattern that you've put in. In this case here we had a symmetrical triangle. You wait for confirmation of a breakout. We had a breakout candle right here or here depending on how you see it, right? If you took this one as the breakout candle, then this was your confirmation. If you took this one as the breakout candle, then this was your confirmation. And usually I opened about halfway throughout that candle. So that's going to be right around this place. Uh, I have a 3% stop loss and a 10, sometimes 15% Actually, it's more like usually 9 or 15% of a take profit. It just depends a little bit on how much leverage I'm using and a lot of different factors. But in this specific case here, I told you guys as well, it's not that smart to have that high of a take profit because there's a couple of really important areas. This one was too close and I basically thought if we put a take profit right there, we might do it, but then with half for, for money, for example. But I would more so like to bet basically on the next breakout towards the next target. And on the XP forefront, you can also see again that it kind of coincides here on the upper end with the 0.618 Fibonacci extension level, which again, we bounced back from a couple of times throughout the last couple of days. Today is the first time that we kind of broke through and tested some areas above there. Uh, but I'm just hoping that piece by piece, we're going to you know, kind of bounce from the um, trend line potentially bounce back to the 0 0.5 at about 96 cents or so but generally speaking just build the next wave upwards where this entire august september price action was basically just a first or initial high and a dip before making a newer high and i, th I think that's basically the pattern which is going to flow which is going to be like this right that we had one little move like that and then just continue on higher. That's again my personal expectation, and that's again also where my money is going to be. As you guys know, the last couple of days on Twitter, I think from every day I've been shouting that basically, that I am proud to own XRP, and that I'm proud to just buy more every single day or every single week, whatever. I still stand by that, guys. I'm still buying like a madman, and the trading is definitely, definitely working prosperously. So what's the next step? Well, to be honest with you, my trade is done, so I'm not exactly sure um, if, if I can say that people should stay into it or something. However, I always, and as you guys know, have a trade open. Here's, for example, we have about 10,000 XRP with 10 times leverage open. Uh, we opened that at about 87 cents or so. I believe it's actually twice that we traded it and opened it. Uh, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was this, this trade that we did right there. 
And I told you guys on my personal account, I closed it at about 15% profit. Uh, and again, I told you guys this before I think it actually happened. I just explained to you guys how much profit and everything like that. Um, but on this account, I didn't because I forgot to close it. And then I was like, you know what? I'll just stick with it. And as it currently stands, yeah, we did pretty well. So even though I think we would have made more money if we just took these two trades separately on this account, if you, I guess, just hold on for dear life, sometimes it gets you these better results as well. And so short term, I guess I'm just going to stick with this long-term trade that is basically a hedge for if we get a settlement if we then shoot to for example five bucks again with my 10 times leverage 500 percent 400 percent returns or so again times 10 four thousand percent returns on my ten thousand xrp or nine thousand dollars yeah that's pretty nice right i'm not going to complain about that so i'm definitely i guess fine with that i'm not gonna um go ahead and cry that's a little bit of a sideline uh, then again yeah right now short term we're making higher lows and or second higher highs and higher lows we don't know how long that's going to sustain itself for. All coins look to have broken out and still look very, very juicy, broken out of the bullish flag. So from that perspective, I would say, yeah, we're continuing on with the bullish pattern like I've been predicting and screaming for weeks. However, I can't shout these things too early because very often we get faked out, specifically in the crypto market. Then again, look how bad in a good way, how badass Bitcoin's reversal was here, getting back to the 48,000, 48,500 resistance that we are basically battling with right now. You can see short term, right? This is basically the resistance area which we are battling at. And I just personally expect us to get over there, but we shall see if we break out. You know, we shall see very, very shortly here, guys. All right, in terms of whales, we didn't really get that much interesting stuff going on. We have one big whale of about 150 million XRP that I've been watching, but it's just a Nexo transfer. And since it's internal, I'm not really going to shout out anything about this. It's not really that significant, but it happened a couple of hours ago and 150 million XRP is always something that I look at like, hmm, what's going on there? But in this case here, guys, nothing really to see. Now, on the other end, a couple of people have been asking me what it, what it was basically with the um, with the Ripple money that they got because they kept so much XRP this time and I didn't explain it properly, maybe. So Ripple decided to add liquidity to ODL corridors through XRP escrow release. They basically got a billion XRP, put 600 million back and had 400 million left. Some are saying they're going to be using it this time to add liquidity for some of the ODL providers and they're basically funding them in some way, shape or form. Guys, it's so hard to figure this out. It is so, 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 so hard. If they're sending 10 million to Bitstamp, it could be that they're selling. It could be because they want to help the platform out as a grant. It could be that this is their agreement. It could be just providing liquidity. It could be so many different small parts that I'm like, yeah, let's just, let's just think about it as if Ripple's doing something good for the XP ecosystem and kind of forget about it. Unless you really want to, want to bet an eye and just kind of keep staring and tracking down. If you want to, be my guest and tell me the results. But I really honestly don't know. And I think it's almost impossible to figure out exactly what these payments are for unless you contact Ripple directly. Now, investors now moving to Solana and Cardano as Ethereum loses steam. I saw this article and I find it so funny to see this. When people shout this out, I always giggle a little bit inside my head because if you really think it's truthful that people are selling their Ethereum like in masses to go hoard Cardano and ADA, oh, sorry, guys, Cardano and Solana, I, I would say you're wrong. Uh, even though there are some people switching, yes, they all have their, their, their separate, basically, community or, or their own separate little yeah area of interest so cardano and solana are of course quote unquote better than ethereum is but with ethereum and bitcoin very often the appeal is that it's the old school properly decentralized nets you know and so people who have this 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 interest in ethereum a lot of them won't really switch over just because another network is cheaper because there have been these cheaper alternatives from so many years They've, they've been there, and theoretically speaking, you can always use a layer two, for example, like Matic, it's not Polygon, to take your Ethereum off the main chain and transact really cheaply before bringing it back in, meaning you, know, you can still use Ethereum in a really cheap sense. So what exactly would make the appeal higher for ADA or Solana? It's that they're newer. It's that they're allowing functionality just now so that you can, for example, build something which is going to get main adoption. If you're launching a decentralized exchange on Ethereum, it's not going to get that much traction. If you're launching one on Solana or ADA, there's a good chance that you're going to get out on top if you have a little bit of marketing, a little bit of money. So from that perspective, the appeal is just a lot higher if you're you know, a developer in that sense for some. But if you've already established something on Ethereum or you're just doing NFTs and stuff like that, why would you switch up? I don't know. It just it's, it's really 
it, it really depends, guys. A lot of these people who have been grandfathered in with Ethereum don't really want to switch over. And that's like kind of logical, too. Raul Paul is extremely bullish on crypto in the next few months. C2 charts. I am finding it very hard to not get extremely bullish about the next few months. Almost every crypto chart looks coiled and ready for a big move after months of consolidation. Here are two charts that matter to me right now. This is the total market cap. It is likely ready to move from two standard deviation oversold versus trend to overbought. Okay. That looks to me that the entire space can three times into year end and six times into next year. I think the cycle extends. Very, very interesting. So he says... It is likely ready to move from two standard deviations oversold versus trend to overbought. Okay, so right now at two deviations or standard deviations oversold to two standard deviations overbought right there. That is for Bitcoin. Um, or is the total crypto market cap? End of the year, he's talking freaking about seven trillion dollars or so. That's significant. That's very, very heavy. Then again, guys, I'm all up for it. I'm all a big fan of this type of stuff because if I'm honest with you, I believe in the process. And again, I'm saying it right now. Quote this, clip this, whatever you want to do. I think the next quarter, so October, November, December, are going to be crazy for crypto. I honestly believe that because almost every single year, these are the three most exciting months. And I'm already telling you guys this up front. So if we get a huge, crazy Bitcoin spike to 100,000 or a huge, crazy spike in XRP, know that we were expecting this. The next couple of months, I think, are about to be crazy. And if we dump, guys, I'm going to be quite surprised. Not if it's one dump before the moon, because that can always happen. You know, it can always get some, some players who want to shake people out. But if it's just, you know, another bearish cycle, basically, where we trend lower and lower and lower, I'm going to be very surprised because everything looks primed for positivity. It just, you cannot really see it differently. Then I just saw this. Elon Musk promises new treat for Dogecoin fans. BS. Somebody's trying to clickbait you. He basically, some guy said, we are... In new, inundated with the new Model 3 and Ys, please change the free, uh, free color to something else. Thanks. Silver, bring back silver. Just a thought. And where's Floki? He said, good point. We'll be discussing with Team Floki pick tomorrow. And people all of a sudden thought, oh, Floki, uh, the Floki crypto or Shiba or whatever, man. Come on. <laughs> ah, interesting. Now, Ethereum fractal from 2017 that resulted in 7,000% gains for ETH appears again in 2021. This is something that I am excited about. However, I... I don't really believe in, in in history repeating itself in the sense that I don't believe in these types of fractals purely because I've seen these things on YouTube and on the internet so many thousands of times and the majority of times they just don't work where I've kind of lost faith. So can this be the right thing? Yeah, obviously it can. But I've just gone kind of stale from watching so many of these, oh, fractal analysis, look at these fractals, look at this, the, the, that I've kind of lost faith in that. And so... It's not really my style anymore. You guys get it, hopefully. Um, I hope for everybody that it works out in this exact same manner, but it, it just it, it just isn't my style. Then again, whenever Raul Paul kind of puts it up, because it's still kind of a fractal thing, I feel a little bit more than, than this. Maybe it's hypocritical. Could be. Yeah, maybe it is. <laughs> uh, but it is something interesting to get into, potentially. And then last but not least, um, I saw Songbird, because Mac talked about it. Songbird is going freaking nutty. Holy smokes. So Songbird right now is freaking 55 cents. What in the world? I know it's not everywhere just quite yet. It's mostly on Bitru that that is the case. And so Bitru kind of sets the prices, kind of, right? But damn, Don Diggly, damn. That is a Z. Damn, that's crazy, guys. 55 cents per songbird ah uh, i i regret not just claiming more of my xrp for the flare slash songbird airdrops would have been so much money for free but i guess that's the regret huh luckily i, I still have a lot of extra or a lot of flare claimed but yeah if it just did it with myself custody well it could have claimed my songbird which i'm kind of sad about i have no almost no songbird only for my xp that was on uh, bit true so it's kind of sad uh, but I guess I can still sell my, my songbird right now on Bitru and just make a freaking ton of money. Or just keep it and I, I'm going to always keep You guys know how it works. I'm going to keep it and see what happens. At first, I always thought Flare was going to be like half a cent and songbird was going to be worthless. But I guess people have proved me wrong. Even though it's a free coin, people are still valuing it pretty crazy, which is interesting. But I guess, um, you know, all I can say is, damn, that's nice for them. Huh? That's nice for me too because I'm making money. 
All right, guys, that was it for today's video. Hopefully, you all enjoyed it. I'm hoping to hit 150K subs by the end of the year. If you aren't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys again in another crypto video later today.